This is Tar Heel Talk, an in-depth look at the issues and people making news in North Carolina. Here's your host, Sonia Williams. The holiday season is officially here. That time in between Thanksgiving and the new year where lots of people are celebrating with festivities. And on today's show, we're going to talk about how to celebrate without packing on the pounds. And for that, we have Dr. Carolyn Dunn. She is the professor, a professor and head of the Agricultural and Human Sciences at North Carolina State University. Dr. Dunn, welcome back to Tar Heel Talk. Thank you. It's great to be here. Mm -hmm. Now, we just finished our Thanksgiving feasts and are still trying to recover from that, but I, and I know like a lot of other people, have already been getting invitations to other house parties and work parties and parties for your children. So there are lots of parties that are gonna be going on um, yes. over the next few weeks. Is this um, a prime time for people to gain weight? It is, and uh, you know, the national average for gaining weight during between Thanksgiving and New Year's is around one to two pounds, and that doesn't sound like a lot. That's the average, first of all. But the bad part about that is, is we usually don't take them off. So okay. we put on these one to two pounds, maybe more, because that is the average, as I said, but, mm -hmm. but we, don't, we don't take them off. And it's this, this gradual gaining over time that really creates the health problems. Right, and that's where this holiday challenge comes into play to kind of help people stay on track. Well, you mentioned all the parties that you have invitations to. We don't think the holidays is a great time to try to lose weight, right. but can we just maintain our weight? And so the Eat Smart, Move More, Maintain, Don't Gain Holiday Challenge, that's mm -hmm. where that comes in. Okay. It's a free program. We've been doing it for several years. It's, it's online. You sign up online and it's free. And we begin to send you tips and we have blog posts and recipes. And you're online with, right now we just surpassed our goal. We have 15,000 people signed up from wow. all over the world mm -hmm. to be part of this with you. So you're online with a cohort that you can ask questions. Um, post comments of how you're doing and the goal is just to keep your weight the same from before Thanksgiving right. to New Year's Day. And I've signed up to, to take that challenge this year and what I love is the, the daily um, kind of the tip of the day right. and, um, and that's so important to just have some structure and some guidance to help you during this hectic time of year. It's that mindfulness getting that, 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 that reminder every day that every day is a new day to be able to make healthy choices for your eating, healthy choices for your activity, for your stress. I heard a little stress in your voice when you mm -hmm. said you're already starting to get all these invitations. <laughs> yeah, it can be overwhelming. It, it is overwhelming. Mm -hmm. we, we all get all of these invitations. We have all this opportunity to celebrate with friends and family. And that's my first tip to people when they, they start talking about the stress of the holidays mm -hmm. and they talk about the eating in the holidays, is to really plan out your holiday. What are the most important things for you and your family? You absolutely cannot do it all. You're already right. seeing this and we're barely past Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. you, you can't do it all. So what are the most important things? At the end of New Year's Day, what do you want to be able to look back and say, this was a great holiday. What would it take for, for that to happen? And so make sure that you put those things in your holiday and maybe can pass on some of the, some of the parties and some of the festivities that aren't as important to you. Mm -hmm. Well, if we are attending a party um, or two, there are several strategies that, um, that you have and then you can share with us on how to make sure that we are mindful of what we're eating and what we're drinking. So the holidays are filled with special foods and drinks. We can have the things that are most important to us. We can have the things that are special to us, but pass on the things that are just, you know, huh, I could, I could pass on that. So think about at a party or even just over the holidays, all the foods that were offered as the buffet, but mm -hmm. not your buffet. There's okay. a difference there. You hear some people say, well, just take a little bit of everything. I, I don't think that's a great strategy. Hmm. I think a great strategy is to survey, if you're at a party, sort of survey what's available and say, you know what? That really looks like a special thing. That is my favorite gingerbread cookie or fudge mm -hmm. or, or eggnog or fruitcake, whatever is fruitcake anybody's favorite maybe. But if what, whatever, <laughs> your, whatever your favorite is and say, you know what, I'm gonna have that. I'm gonna mindfully eat it. I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna savor it. And I'm gonna have a little bit of that, not just a little bit of everything. Some things may not even be special to you. Mm -hmm. I brought a carton of eggnog here okay. to remind me that 
to talk to you about savoring your favorites. That's my favorite. Okay. Eggnog, mm -hmm. specifically Howling Cow Eggnog from <laughs> NC State. Mm -hmm. um, it's very high in calories. It's very high in fat. But it's something that means something to me in the holidays. And so I make room in my diet for it. I, I savor it and enjoy it. Um, and I might pass on some random holiday cookie that, that might not be mm -hmm. special to me. That maybe one of your colleagues brings into the office, because that happens wow. a lot this time, during yeah. this time of year. I call it the food dump. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's you know, you get, you get a gift of food, or you're asked to bring something, you run by and you get something, and you just dump it in the break room or in the kitchen. Um, yeah, stay away from, stay away from that. And, and that leads into another thing that you can do at a party or at your mm -hmm, office is, mm -hmm. is your environment. What is your environment like with respect to healthy eating and physical activity? And when, when I say environment, you probably think of like bike lanes and sidewalks in your neighborhood, and, and that's part of it. But we have smaller environments that we have even more control over. You control the environment in your home. You control the environment in your own office. And you control the environment, and when you're in a party, make that environment healthy. So at a party, for example, Situate yourself away from the food. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be right next to the buffet or to, to where all the food is so you're not tempted to go back for something or nibble on something that you're not even mindful that you're doing. Mm -hmm. In your office at work, make your office at work a place where there's not a candy bowl or if there is food, it's healthy food. And your home environment is the environment you have the most control over. We tend to eat what we see. Mm -hmm. And so if you have candy or cookies on the counter, that's probably what you're gonna go for. So if you have those things in your house, and we all do for special occasions, put them away in the cabinet, in the cupboard, or in the refrigerator so that you're not tempted to eat those foods. You can sort of use this to your advantage too to, to put out foods that are healthy that you wanna mm -hmm. eat. I brought a basket of apples, put that on the counter right. instead of the, mm -hmm. the unhealthy foods. And they can be decorative. Um as well. I like that's to put right. the apples and the oranges out on uh -huh. kind of on display, but yeah. that's much better than putting out the chocolate candy and, and the cookies and, Absolutely. and things. So when you're talking about planning your holiday and, and making a priority of some of the important things, should you plan your eating or have a game plan for eating when you go to a party? I, I think so. I think going to a party really, really hungry is, is a recipe for kind of some scary things mm -hmm. happening. Um, eat a handful of nuts or a small thing of yogurt before you go or a piece of fruit before you go so that you're not so super hungry. And again, survey what's, what's available and what's special to you. If it's a meal that you're served and it's a plated meal, um, ask for smaller portions or, or, or um, make sure that you, you look at the plate and say, oh, this looks like a lot of food or this looks like a, a normal amount of food for me, this looks good. Um, if, it's, uh, if it's a buffet, mm -hmm. then again, survey what's there, take what you think is, is good for you, and leave some of the items. You don't have to choose every item from the buffet. Excellent advice. We're going to take a break and talk more in just a minute. We'll be back with more on holiday eating after these messages. Over the course of the holiday season, we'll be faced with decadent desserts, rich beverages, and holiday festivities that di disrupt our normal eating routine. And most people don't want to give up any of their holiday foods or activities. So here to help us kind of get some gu guidance on that and to talk about the 2016 Holiday Challenge is Dr. Carolyn Dunn. And the, the Holiday Challenge is a program that helps us to stay on track and be mindful of what we're eating during the holiday season. Absolutely. It's, um, it's something that we all, we all fight, you know, all the, the, the food that we have uh, an opportunity to eat and special foods and we want to take advantage mm -hmm. of what's important to us in the holidays without just going overboard and gaining unwanted pounds that are just going to be really tough to take off after the holidays. Absolutely. And you talked about, you know, planning and prioritizing what you would like during the holidays and one of my favorites is the wine. I will forego the, the Christmas cookies and, and the holiday cakes 
for wine and you've brought along a wine glass and and have some pretty good tips on how to stay on track with that so you just said you know the magic words it's this trade-off mm -hmm. so you, you're you're willing to set aside some things that aren't special for you for the wine that is special for you so cheers <laughs> i'm a, i'm a wine drinker mm -hmm. as well so um we use the the wine glass as a as to to give people some tips on how to um, enjoy um, the alcoholic beverages over the holidays, but not overdo it. So this is the first thing, this is a relatively large wine right. glass. Mm -hmm. um, so whatever size wine glasses you have at home, measure out what is a five ounce pour, which is a normal glass of mm -hmm. wine, and see where that comes to on your glasses. Since this glass is so large, it probably would only come to about right wow. here. Mm -hmm. And so you're saying, well, if you are gonna put this much wine in this large glass, you're probably gonna have two glasses mm -hmm. of wine. Just so you know where that five ounce place is on your glass. Um, the other tip if you're at a party or at a restaurant especially, when you're having wine from, if you have bottles of wine at a party or at a restaurant, you have a glass of wine and you take a few sips and the server comes by or your host comes by, mm -hmm. and they want to just add a little bit of wine to your glass. Where at the end of the night you don't know how many right, glasses right. of wine you've had. So a tip that I like to tell people and I like to do myself is just just hold your glass. Don't leave it sitting on the table mm -hmm. or on the coffee table if you're at a party. Just hold it. It's not that you can't have a second glass of wine. It's right. that you want to know how much exactly. you're drinking. Exactly. And, and when you're talking about drinking wine and, and cocktails, um, because we they are running rampant uh, for the holiday season as well, That's um, there can be some additional calories there That's that right. we may not even realize. So if you, you take a, a generic beer, wine, or um, a mixed drink, um, as long as the mixer is calorie free, you're, you're talking about the, about the same number of calories. Now some of the craft beers can have a lot more calories because they're much higher in alcohol. Mm -hmm. But just a general American style beer, um, a glass of wine, uh, vodka, soda, that kind of thing, are going to have about the same number of calories. Mm -hmm. But as you start to add these sweet mixers to the to the, um, the alcohol, that's when you really add a lot of calories and empty calories just as sugar. So okay. if you're having a mixed drink, try to use a, a mixer that's calorie free, whether that's soda or a diet drink mm -hmm. or just water um, and ju or just a splash of something if you like a cola or something like that, just a splash so you're not adding a lot more calories to that beverage. Right. Again, that mindfulness is extremely important. Right. And for those that want to have a special drink at the holidays that don't consume alcohol or the designated driver for that evening, also guard against those sugar, that extra sugar calories. So just have club soda with a splash of cranberry juice or, mm -hmm. or something like that that would be a special drink but, but not have a lot of calories. Right. And then when you talk about um, portion control and, and indulging on some of your favorite things. You brought another example here, this delicious looking brownie. It, it um, does look good. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Whole Foods. Um, <laughs> it, uh, it's some relatively new research to look at, at how we enjoy foods. Where do we get the most enjoyment, especially out of high calorie special foods? So if I was faced with this, this entire brownie, and, and let's just say that I was a really a, a chocolate fan, uh -huh. um, I could eat this whole brownie and I would probably estimate this is around 500 calories. But if I was to take just a piece of this brownie that I would estimate to be 100, 150 calories, it's these first three or four bites where I get the real enjoyment out of this, out of this brownie. I can eat more of the brownie, but I'm not really gaining any more enjoyment. Really? So and it's that's these, new research. It's pretty that, new mm -hmm. research that it shows that it's these first few bites where we really enjoy the food and we appreciate the food. And eating more of it, which we certainly could do, we're not enjoying it anymore. We're not getting any more enjoyment out of it. It's just more calories. So especially when you're faced with something very rich and decadent and delicious, I'm sure, as this brownie, look at taking just a few bites, savoring those bites, and putting the rest away for another time or sharing it with several, you can share this with several friends, mm -hmm. um, and, and really enjoy that food and be mindful of the taste of that food and, and how you're enjoying it so instead of just getting the extra calories. Right. Excellent advice. How can people find out more information and tips um, about the challenge and just being healthy in general. Well, we'd love to have everyone sign up for the holiday challenge. As we said, it's free. Um, you'll start to get those those daily messages. Mm -hmm. You'll become one of 15,000 people across the globe that are trying to do the exact same thing you are, and that's to enjoy the holidays, enjoy friends and family, but not end up on New Year's Day wishing that you hadn't mm -hmm. have overindulged. Absolutely, and they can log on to 
ESMM Way Less for Eat Smart Move More Way Less dot com, dot com right. to sign up for that holiday challenge. Absolutely. And with that challenge, there's so many components, and and I love that. I'm um, getting the healthy recipes and and just some other options to kind of help you navigate through the holiday season. Right. So I, I'm one of the bloggers for the for the holiday challenge, and we blog on a host of things from stress, which we've talked about a little bit about how to get the most out of the holidays, mm -hmm. recipes. Um, tips like hold your wine glass, um, you know, everything that you're getting, those daily tips that you get might not be, you know, the one you get today might not be really speak to you, wait till tomorrow. That one may be something that really helps you. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that we um, also like to help people with in dealing with the stress are those things that, that really aren't specifically dealing with healthy eating, but have uh, definitely have an impact on what we eat. And one of those right. big things is sleep. Um, we know that when we sleep less than seven hours a night, we tend to eat more and we're less physically active. Our bodies are searching for that energy that we didn't get by resting those seven or eight hours a night. So we really encourage people, especially over the holidays, and I know mm -hmm. that that sounds counterintuitive if you're trying to run around and get everything done, to make sure that you, um, you schedule in enough time for, to get that sleep. It will help with your stress level and it'll also help you to, um, to eat healthy. Once again, excellent advice. We're going to take another break and we'll talk more in just a minute. We'll be back with more Tar Heel Talk after these messages. Welcome back to Tar Heel Talk. I'm Sonia Williams. Tis the season for decorating, shopping, entertaining, and of course, eating. And we've been talking today about the 2016 Holiday Challenge and how to enjoy all the wonderful food and beverages without packing on the pounds. And with us again is Dr. Carolyn Dunn, professor and head of the Department of Agricultural and Human Sciences at North Carolina State University. This holiday challenge is just such a good roadmap and kind of buddy, if you will, for people just, and it's not to try to lose weight. No. The, the theme is? Maintain your weight over the holidays mm -hmm. from Thanksgiving to New Year's Day. That's our goal. And I'm in it with you. Every, mm -hmm. Everybody's in this together. All 15,000 <laughs> people across the globe are trying to do wow. the same thing, just to maintain our weight through the holidays, but still enjoy the holidays for the special foods, mm -hmm. special drinks, and special celebrations that we all get to participate in. Right. So not to, not to do away with the, special, the things that make the holidays special, but to learn how to enjoy them in moderation, stay active, get enough sleep, manage your stress, and, and at, the end of, at the end of New Year's Day, be able to say that was the best holiday ever, mm -hmm. and not have extra pounds. Right, and not have to make that your New Year's resolution to <laughs> right, lose right, weight right. because you've gained so much over the holidays. This holiday challenge, um, one of the things that I, I read um, after I joined um, the challenge was the virtual r walking or running uh, competition right. or kind of a race, right. if right. you will, which I think is neat because that friendly competition slash encouragement will help you just to be mindful to stay active during this time. Well, and one thing that does as well, and this is a, a strategy that's been proven time and time again to, be, to help people be successful, is you're tracking. You're tracking mm -hmm. how active you are. You can even track your, your food intake as well using an, an online app or your phone or that kind of thing. And that really does help us be more mindful about how much activity we're getting as, mm -hmm. as you're talking about the virtual uh, race across Iceland or around Iceland uh -huh. or, uh, or, how, or what we're eating. So it's really, um, that's one of the great things about the challenge is not just that you're in there with a cohort, but they're, they're, help, they're in there with you as well, tracking and, and trying to eat, mindful, eat mindfully, be physically active mindfully and maintain mm -hmm. their weight over the holidays. What are some of the ways that we can be active during this very busy time of year? I think that we, um, we overlook the importance of just getting out and walking. Just mm -hmm. get out and walk. Um, it's a, it, you can bundle up if, it gets, if it's cold. If you have people in town, regardless of their ages or, or activity level, you can all go out and take a walk, get caught up on, on uh, family drama that's mm -hmm. going on as you, as you uh -huh. take a walk or catch up with, uh, with friends. Um, just get out and, and, and take a quick walk. And no walk is too short. 
Five, you have five minutes, you have 10 minutes, you have 15, you have an hour, whatever, it's great. Don't say, well, we don't have enough time. And just, just a few minutes out the door, get out in the fresh air and get some movement. And um, it really does all add up to those minutes that we need each day. And I think that's important to remember because I know a lot of times people think if I don't have 30 minutes or an hour to devote to exercising, then it's not worth doing. It's, it's, it's really, we live in such an all or nothing kind of uh, way of thinking and especially with physical activity we need to get away from that because the the real benefits of physical activity are seen from somebody that does nothing mm -hmm. to somebody that does even a little bit so even if you're just doing a little bit that little every little bit counts so getting outside taking that quick walk start with five or ten minutes you'll get hooked and you'll <laughs> you'll do more mm -hmm. That's, I think the Fitbits and all the, the gadgets right. we have to help track that are motivators as well. They are great motivators to be active so that you can see on your wrist or as you're, you're plugging it into your computer how many steps you've taken that day. And so most of us have these sedentary lives where we've, we've taken all of the opportunity to be physically active out of our day. Everything is automated. And so we really have to purposefully put that activity back in our day. And that means planning to be active even if it's just a few minutes a day. Mm -hmm. And it's just as simple as putting on your walking shoes and walking out the door. Right, absolutely. Now, people can log on to the website to sign up for this challenge? Absolutely, okay. ESMM stands for Eat Smart Move More, ESMMWayLess.com, and you can <laughs> register on the site for the holiday challenge. It's completely free of charge, and you'll start getting your reminders, as you saw when mm -hmm. you signed up. You'll start getting your reminders that day, and you'll be part of the, of the global um, push to, to maintain our weight during the holidays. Right. Recipes, blogs, there's a webinar coming up in December. It's all free of charge. Wow, and that the goal is to maintain and not gain, That's or right. not gain and maintain. <laughs> That's right, mm -hmm. maintain and not gain. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. What, for people who may be just joining us, you have some excellent tips for holiday parties and just strategies to help stay on track and be mindful of what you're eating and drinking. Take us through a few of those again. Sure. Um, one is to create an environment in your home, in your office, or whether you're at a party, your micro environment, I like to call it, that is, that is healthy. So if you're at a party, situate yourself away from the food. If you're at home, keep the healthy food out on the counter. Put the, the not so healthy food away. Mm -hmm. um, look at, at the, the holidays as the buffet, not your buffet. So pick and choose the things that are really special to you for the holidays. Eat them mindfully and enjoy them and leave the things that are not so special, like the store-bought cookies or mm -hmm. the things that someone didn't want, that someone gave them, they brought into the break mm -hmm. room. Um, th keep in mind that even the special foods during the holidays that you really love, it's those first few bites that really give you that mm -hmm. satisfaction and, and enjoyment. And that's important, and you were talking about that being relatively new research. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's to look at, you know, where are you getting the most enjoyment out of that food that would be a special sometimes food? Um, it's the first couple of bites. You're going to eat more of that food if you choose to and get more calories, but you're not going to really get much more enjoyment out of it. Mm -hmm. So savoring those first couple of bites, being mindful about eating the foods that are important to you, and then maybe leaving, leaving some of that brownie or, or cupcake on your plate or sharing it with mm -hmm. a couple of friends. As we enjoy this fun, special, and big, a bit hectic time of year, what are some things that we need to keep in mind in terms of managing our stress and, and just trying to manage the holidays? Well, we cannot, we absolutely cannot do it all. Um, we talked earlier about the invitations are starting to roll mm -hmm. in, have already started to roll in. Think, of, think about what's going to make this holiday special for you. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not always about food. It's about being with family and friends, taking time for yourself, making sure you're getting the rest and sleep that you need to manage your stress. So planning your holiday. Um, so that at the end of the day, it's not just a crazy mad dash to New Year's Day. You really right. enjoyed it and spent time with family and friends. Excellent advice. It's always a pleasure to have you on the show, Dr. Carolyn Dunn with NC State University. Thank you so much and have a wonderful holiday. Thank you for having me. Happy right. holidays to you as well. That's it for this week's Tar Heel Talk. To comment on this or other episodes of the show, follow us on Facebook or Instagram, or you can send us an email to tarheeltalk at fox50.com. I'm Sonia Williams. Thanks so much for watching and have a safe and happy holiday season.